every country in the world is dependent on somebody, some other country, to feed its population. The world's rich countries are even more dependent on uh, having access to germplasm from other countries than the so-called uh, world's poor countries. So the treaty, in fact, is about access to plant genetic resources regardless of where they are. So everybody, every country can feed its population in a, in a sustainable manner. The treaty has achieved a consensus on multilateral access to this germplasm among 127 countries. Now FAO has 191 countries. So there are still a few more countries that have to adopt the treaty. But in 10 years, 127 countries agreeing to share their germplasm is a major achievement. And farmers are facing these challenges of climate change. Farmers are facing challenges of drought, uh, pests, uh, higher temperature, low temperature, flooding, and everything else. 50% of the yield gains that have occurred in the last 50 years in the world in crops have come from plant genetic resources. The treaty is funding several projects around the world worth about $6 million to try to improve resistance to certain diseases, to try to conserve certain, uh, certain uh, varieties. One of the clearest examples, the biggest and uh, most talked about example is the effort of a farmer's, farmer's community in Peru to conserve potato uh, germplasm. Potato is one of the most important foods around the world, especially in the, in the Indian countries. So farmers are learning how to continue to have a higher productivity of potatoes, which varieties, how to share knowledge, uh, how to share that germplasm varieties of uh, potato. And this work is actually funded by the treaty. As long as this capacity exists for farmers to conserve and improve their germplasm, and as long as capacity exists for scientists to continue to work to improve their germplasm to adapt to climate change, I think world's food security is on the, on the, on the right track.